All right, let's do some problems with de Broglie waves, uncertainty, and atoms. First off, what is the de Broglie wavelength of an electron with an energy of 4.55 times 10 to the negative tw 29 joules? All right, now the first question you may have is, what do I mean by energy? Is this the total energy of the electron or just its kinetic energy? Well, that's a really good question. That isn't very clear in this problem, but you can figure this out. You can deduce that it can only be the kinetic energy by simply saying, well, what is the rest energy of an electron? That's the mass of an electron times c squared. And if you actually plug the numbers in here, which you can do, you'll find that this is to one significant digit, eight times 10 to the negative 14 joules, which is way bigger than that. So this can't possibly include the rest energy. It must just be the kinetic energy. So when we work the problem, this will be our kinetic energy, 4.55 times 10 to the negative 29 joules. Another thing you will note is that this energy is way smaller than the rest energy. That tells us that this problem is not relativistic. We don't need to use relativity, right? Many orders of magnitude difference between the kinetic energy and the rest energy means this particle is moving not fast compared to the speed of light. All right, so 4.55 times 10 to the negative 29 joules. Okay, here we go. Took my computer a minute, but we're back. 4.55 times 10 to the negative 29th joules is our kinetic energy, and this is a non-relativistic problem. We'll also need the mass of the electron and Planck's constant to work this problem. All right, before I work this problem correctly, I'm going to try it a way that you might think of doing and show you why you can't do that, all right? The first thing you might think of is you might say, look, I know the energy, and I've got this energy relationship uh, for quantum particles. The energy is Planck's constant times F, Right? And you can say, oh, I've got this energy, and I can use this to find the frequency of my particle. All right? Um, well, uh, we didn't want the frequency. We wanted the wavelength, right? So we write h is equal to, like, the frequency is just the velocity of the wave divided by the wavelength, right? So I could solve this for the wavelength. How do I find the velocity? Some of you will remember when we did photons and we said the energy of a photon is hc over lambda and I guarantee you someone's going to do this on the exam. Someone's going to plug in c for the velocity but that's not right. That's for a photon not for an atom. So we can't use that. So what velocity do we use? Well maybe you're going to come along and you're going to say well I know the kinetic energy and I know this is not a relativistic problem so I can write the energy as one half mv squared. I can solve for v and plug it in. All right, that also doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Because this is the velocity of the wave that represents the electron. It's not the velocity of the electron, all right? And we didn't have time to go into that when we studied waves, but it turns out waves can have two velocities. There's the velocities that the ripples inside the waves move, and that's this right here. And imagine I have a, like a pulse, you know, a laser pulse or something going through glass. The, the velocity of the ripples can be different from the velocity of the bulk of the, of, you know, kind of the blob of energy. We call the velocity of the ripples the phase velocity and the velocity of the blob of energy the group velocity. The group velocity is how fast the electron moves. The wave velocity is how fast the ripples move. All right? So this right here is how fast the ripples move. It's not how fast the electron is moving. So we don't know what that velocity is. We cannot get it from that. And so let's not take this approach, all right? So that's why that approach doesn't work, because we want the wavelength, not the frequency. And to get the wavelength from the frequency, we need to know the velocity of the waves, which is different from the velocity of the electron, all right? Which is different from the group velocity. So instead of doing that, let's use our de Broglie relation that gives us the wavelength directly, which is wavelength is h over p, all right? Now p depends not on the wave velocity, but on the velocity of the actual electron, right? And so we can find p from the kinetic energy by remembering that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. If I multiply by m over m, this becomes 1 over 2m m squared v squared, or 1 over 2m times the momentum squared. So p squared over 2m cla in classical physics is the kinetic energy. So that means the momentum is just the square root of 2m kinetic energy, all right? I can plug that into my equation. So the wavelength is going to be Planck's constant over the square root of 2m kinetic energy 
and Planck's constant is here. It's 0 0.626.07 times 10 to the negative 34 uh, joule seconds. Well, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, so this is the same as kilogram meters squared per second. All right, and down here I have the square root of 2 times the mass of my electron, which is 9.109384 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms times my kinetic energy, which is 4.55 times 10 to the negative 29. And what are my units? My units are joules, or kilograms, meters squared per second squared. All right, so these two kilograms cancel that kilograms. Um, the second squared, when I take the square root of that, that cancels seconds. And this meter squared, when I take the square root, it's just one meter, it cancels that. And I'm going to get things in units of meters, which is good. So now I just need to plug the numbers in. Oh, does this make any sense, by the way? Um, another thing we can do to check our answers, bigger kinetic energy, that means it's moving faster. I should have a shorter wavelength, all right? Bigger mass, that means for the same velocity I should have, or for the same energy, I should have more velocity, or sorry, more uh, momentum for the same kinetic energy, it should be smaller. So I can think about this and it seems to make sense. The units work out. So now let's go to Python um, and let's uh, plug these numbers in. So 6.62607 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 2 times 9.109384 times 10 to the minus 30, that was 31, right? 31 times 4.55 times 10, times 10 to the negative 29. And then I want to take the square root of the denominator, and I get 7.28 times 10 to the minus fifth, or uh, that is going to be 72.8 microns. So 72.8 micrometers. There we go. There's the de Broglie wavelength of our electron. Okay, next problem. What's the de Broglie wavelength of an electron which is traveling at 100 meters per second? All right, this one's easier. I know the velocity. I could just go right to lambda is equal to h over p. Now 100 meters per second is way slower than the speed of light, so this is not relativistic. So for my momentum, I can just write this as mv, and then I plug it in, and you know what? You can do that. I'm going to let you do that, remembering the mass of the electron and Planck's constant. Let's move on. Uncertainty. An electron is confined to a thin metal film, which is 0.1 microns thick. Use the uncertainty relations to determine the minimum uncertainty for the velocity of an electron in the film. OK, so our uncertainty relationship, we've got uh, a position, and we want to find uncertainty and velocity. We have a, an uncertainty relationship for momentum and position that looks like this, delta x delta p is greater than h bar over 2, greater than or equal to, all right? But um, assuming this is not relativistic, momentum is just mv, so I can write delta m as, well, once again, assuming it's not relativistic, this mass thing here, it's just a constant, right? So sorry, I don't want delta m. Uh, delta p can be written as mass times change in velocity, because the mass isn't changing. It's just it's not the mass that's uncertain, it's the velocity of the particle which is uncertain. All right? Okay, so I can plug that into my uncertainty relationship and get delta x mass delta v is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. All right? And so then I can solve this for the delta v. Delta v, the uncertainty in velocity, is h bar over 2m delta x. All right, and h bar, of course, is just h over 2 pi. So this is h over 4 pi mass of an electron times the kind of uncertainty position, That's which is the space it's confined in. And once again, I'm just going to let you plug the numbers in there and see what that velocity turns out to be. All right? Now, um, checking units. Once again, h has units of kilograms meters squared per second. And then we're dividing by mass, which is kilograms, and x, which is meters, and boom, boom, boom. All right, it gives us the right units. That's a good sign we haven't made a mistake. Does everything make sense? Well, I mean, 
as much sense as it's going to make to you uh, first attempt at quantum mechanics. Anyway, um, so you can plug in the numbers and get the right answer. And what you'll find is a velocity which is much less than the speed of light. If you find one which is approaching or greater than the speed of light, then you say, oh, we made some bad assumptions. We assumed we didn't have to use relativity. And then you'll have to go back and work the problem with relativity, which is going to be a lot harder. OK. The Bohr atom. A hydrogen atom makes a transition from the n equals 5 to the n equals 2 state. What is the wavelength of the photon emitted? All right, so the idea with the Bohr atom is that these different states have energies, and their en the energy of the nth state is the energy of the ground state divided by n squared. All right, and the energy of the ground state, remember, it's a negative energy because it takes energy to get out of the ground state and pull the electron apart. All right, so the ground state energy is minus the energy it takes to pull it apart. All right? And that is negative 13.606 electron volts. All right? Um, and why am I doing this in electron volts? Because I remember what it is in electron volts. All right? So the energy of our photon, call that E sub gamma, that's going to be the energy of the excited, the higher state, minus the energy of the lower state, right? That atom goes from state 5 to state 2 down to a lower energy state. It loses some energy. Where does that energy go? It goes into the photon. So this is just going to be equal to E naught, 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 2 squared, because the energy of the nth state is E naught over n squared. All right, so this is going to be equal to um, negative 13.606 electron volts times 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 2 squared, all right? And that then is going to be equal to, so negative 13.606 times 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. And that gives us a positive number, right? Because 5 is smaller than 2. And that's 2.85725. So let's just keep that in our calculator, all right? So we don't lose any digits. We'll just call that E, yeah, e sub G. That's the energy of our photon, OK? Now that I know the energy of my photon, I know that E is equal to HF, all right? But I wanted the wavelength of my photon. This time I can write F as C over lambda because the waves of my photon do travel at the speed of light, all right? So the wavelength of my photon then is just going to be HC over the energy. This is the energy of my photon, of course. And so H is 6.62607 times 10 to the negative 34 kilograms meters squared per second. Speed of light is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then E, oh, I'm plugging all this junk in, but I have my energy in electron volts. Now I can convert to or from electron volts, you know, go from electron volts to joules. So I could have just plugged this in here and put it in in joules. But uh, that's a perfectly legitimate thing to do, right? You just look up the constant, the, the conversion parameter, how many joules per electron volt, and convert that. But I'm an atomic physicist. I do this stuff all the time. So I remember that H times C is 1, 2, 3, 9.8 electron volt nanometers. And then I can plug in my value here, 2.857, 2.857 electron volts. And then I'll just get my answer in nanometers. So let's plug this in. 1, 2, 3, 9.8. Um, let's see, I have this in my calculator, so I'll just divide by EG. And that's 434 nanometers. So 434 nanometers is the wavelength of the photon emitted when my hydrogen atom goes from the n equals 5 to the n equals 2 state. And there you have it.